Perfect. Now I have your number. Thanks. Hey, I'm Robbie Kramer. You're listening to the Leverage Podcast, where we discuss using your social skills to hack dating, travel, finding your dream job, and becoming a complete man. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. We have a very cool episode today about penis enlargements. Who wants to talk about big dicks? And <laughs> we have a special guest, Paul Hackett, who has been generous enough to come on and share his story about his recent penis enlargement. And it, when he told me the story and uh, showed me the photos, it was totally not what I expected at all. I kind of had a ton of misconceptions around what this was and what the procedure was like. Um, and Paul's going to fill us in on everything you need to know if, you ever, if you've ever been curious about enlarging your wang. So welcome to the show, Paul. Thanks, man. I'm going to fill you in on being filled in. <laughs> I feel like there's going to be a lot of uh, interesting puns on this episode, right? I, I would imagine so. <laughs> So tell us, like, what made, how big were you before? What made you want to do it? What were some of your preconceptions about it? You know, I was, I was completely, um, I was well within the average size range, right? And that average size range over the years has uh, gone down and down and down as problems with studies have been corrected, right? So back in the day, they would just say to people, hey, measure your dick, tell us how big it is. And then that's how they would come out with an average, which right. is flawed to say. And it's like, way. where do you measure from? How hard is it when you measure? Uh, exactly. There's all those questions <laughs> that I would have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and th th so, um, you know, as these more sophisticated studies have been coming out um, th that have involved actual urologists measuring people in a standardized way, that average has actually gone down. And now that average erect penis size, according to the most extensive study in the subject, um, which was performed by Dr. David Veal uh, in a study that was published, I believe in 2015, is uh, 5.18 inches when erect um, with a circumference of about 4.59 inches. Um, so um, that's, um, you know, it's good news to a lot of people who might think that they are smaller than average based on what they see in porn and um, based on what they've read in some of these earlier studies that were flawed. Um, so, um, so I actually was about um, average girth. I was 4.5 inches around, but I was actually longer by almost an inch. Um, so my, my penis was like um, 6.25 inches long, right? So longer than average, but slightly um, uh, less girthy than average. So I was very much like in the, like 95% like of people, I was in that kind of normal zone or normative zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, I've always... I've and how been, did you feel about it? Did you feel a well, certain way? You know, I mean, I, I, um, you know, I love my dick very much and always have. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I just, um, I write about sex and sexuality for a living. Um, and, you know, I consider myself like a sexual person. I'm very interested in that. It definitely captivates me and it's something I like doing very much and I uh, run with a crew that like doing it very much also. Um, so um, even though I, I, I've, um, you know, I would, I would, I would, I always thought, wow, it would be great if this was a, a little bigger. I'd like, to, you know, I'm of course, like m a lot of men, the, the vast majority of the penises I've seen are in porn. Right? right. And I know, and I think, I hope most people know that these, are statistical outliers, right? These are a self-selecting group of people um, who, who kind of like end up in the porn business because they're probably encouraged to or think they should because they've got the dimensions that they see in porn. So it becomes this, uh, you know, um, it kind of 
draws people into the biz. Um, right. So, I, and then I, we think that that's normal if we're consuming porn content. You know, exactly. we watch, and I mean, what guy? What guy doesn't? Right? Every guy watches a bit of porn. I think yeah. most normal guys, and and that's what you're comparing yourself to. So, yeah, I totally see how that's you know, your idea of average and women too, right? Women are watching it as well. So their exactly. idea of dick size yeah. uh, is certainly unrealistic. Also. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that too, because yeah, more and more women are consuming porn and these are the, uh, the, the they're seeing the same kind of like disconnect between, you know, the actual average and what they see in porn, right? So, right. Um, yeah, um, so, um, you know, I'd read a lot about, you know, penis enlargement. It didn't really seem possible. It, it seemed very expensive. It seemed fraught with risk. Um, it seemed um, like the results were really, um, you know, um, what can I say? The, the unsatisfactory to a lot of people, you know? Um, yeah. So I the kind first of, thing that comes to my mind would be like, what if they fuck something up or, right. or you know, it's like... <laughs> You're dealing with the family jewels down there. <laughs> I know, I know, right. and that was very much on my mind when when this opportunity came along. Um, I was, you know, what? Why would I kind of something that's already good in 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 the you know in the pursuit of making it better? I could ruin it, right? right. That's right. that was a huge, uh, you know. That was a, a huge issue going around my mind. Um, so, um, so that's why um, I was really interested when I learned about this particular procedure, um, because it is non-surgical and um, non-invasive. Um, um, I can tell you about it if you'd like, if you want to know how it works. Yeah, I want to hear all of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's it that was going to be my next question is, you know, what was the procedure like? Had you tried other things in the past to, yeah. you know, pumps or what, you know, what, what are all those sort of non-surgical ways you can go? And what was your experience with that? Well, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of things. Um, uh, th there's a thing called jelking, which, um, you know, has a, a lot of support on the internet, which is supposedly like a, a way of stretching the dick, like, manually um, um, and kind of, you know, proponents say that you create these micro tears and they're assuming that the penis grows in the same way that a muscle grows, you know, a muscle, mm -hmm. you kind of break it down and then it through this break and repair, break and repair, it kind of gradually um, grows bigger. Almost penis like weightlifting. Exactly. But, you know, <laughs> they liken it like, you know, if you, if you take a bottle, you smash it, you glue all the pieces together you smash it, you glue the pieces together, and you do that enough times, it starts to get larger over time, right? And that's, that's the sort of process um, behind jelking. Now, there's no medical support for this. And right. I actually spoke to um, some urologists about this while I was writing a story about it. And they're like, we, you know, they each had people that had come to their office that had permanently damaged their penis doing it this way. And yeah, that seems weird because it's not a muscle. So why would you expect it to act like one? Exactly. Well, because they're not urologists. And I mean, right. you, you know, um, but, but, you know, and, and if people are really trying to do something, um, uh, if, if they want to believe that it works, you know, they're, they're more than willing to kind of um, pursue that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so that was one thing. Now, I did try one other thing that did work. Again, you know, I, I write about sex and sexuality. So a lot of people send me contraptions to to try out you know uh -huh. and um i'd read about this penis stretcher thing which is kind of like a little traction device and um i read a couple of italian studies um that um had used it um oh sorry one was italian one was iranian and um they used it with populations of men that had peroni's disease which is a sort of curvature of the penis um and um they found that these guys who stretch their dicks like this for hours a day um, managed to regain some of the length they'd lost through this Peroni's disease, which is a basically a thickening of scar tissue that can bend the penis and cause like shortening and also painful erections, right? Mm -hmm. So 
so of course people were like, well, can I use this if I don't have Peroni's disease, you know, and, mm. um, and will it have the same effect? And, you know, um, the, the thinking was, well, yeah, why not? You know, it could work. Um, but the thing is you have to spend hours a day in one of these things, maybe six, eight hours a day for months on end. Right. So <laughs> no, it, it, it's like, I'm trying to picture it in my mind. Um, and I, and I think I read something you wrote about it as well, but <laughs> remind me, what does this thing look like? Well, it looks like a, a, a kind of a, a, a miniature medieval torture device, right? <laughs> so it's, it's like the rack, they would call it in the Spanish Inquisition, right? So there's something that goes around the base of the penis, then a clamp that goes on the head, and then you kind of like ratchet up how long it gets, right? So what's the device called? Um, well, there's, there's a ton of different companies that, that offer this advice. They sell them on Amazon and they, they sell them for as cheap as like $28 um, each, you know? Okay. And then you can get these deluxe packages that are supposedly, you, you know, supposed to be more comfortable to wear. Um, because a, a lot of these people complained that it's like super uncomfortable, right? So then I found out about this urologist, Dr. Landon Trost, who was from the Mayo Clinic, that um, he, he was encouraged by all of these studies with these Peroni's patients and said, you know, I think I can redesign a contraption that is, it doesn't take nearly as long to, 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 to kind of do its thing and, um, um, and will be much more comfortable to wear. And because he looked at some of these devices that people were, you know, just ordering from Amazon. And he's like, these don't produce the amount of torque or torsion, I guess, needed to, to make these corrections. So why don't I kind of reimagine, redesign this product? So he did. And he called it the Restore X. And I found out about it. Um, so I gave him a call. I was like, hey, listen, man, what do you think if I, you know, I don't have Peronis, but if I use this, you know, would I, could I get my penis to grow? And he's like, I don't see any medical reason uh, why not. It's not what it's indicated for. It's not what it's supposed to do. But I don't think there'd be any harm in trying it if that's what you want to do. So I did. I got one. And um, over the next several weeks, I used it a half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the evening. It wasn't the most comfortable thing in the world. But it wasn't the most uncomfortable. It's certainly better than wearing it six or eight hours a day, just two yeah. half an hour sessions. I did it while I was like drinking my morning coffee and watching TV, you know? Mm -hmm. And over the course of, um, I think it was eight weeks, my um, erect length went from 6.25 inches to 6.85 inches. So more than a half inch longer, right? Okay. So it, seems. it is substantial. And the, the course though was for 12 weeks, right? So I imagine if I'd have worn it for the whole 12 weeks, I could have maybe gained an inch in length based on what I did over the first eight weeks, right? Mm -hmm. So that's pretty impressive. Apart from one thing, my girlfriend didn't like it. Um, my girlfriend uh, felt that it was the end of my penis was now banging into her uterus in a way that she found painful. So, um, so I immediately stopped um, and just you know, and as you can imagine, like you don't do this thing, or maybe, you, you, I mean, maybe people don't know this, but if it's like braces on your teeth, right? If you take them off, it's best to have a retainer afterwards because eventually they're going to find their way back to, to where they're kind of like supposed to be. Right. Totally. Yeah. So, so once you stop using a device like this, it, it, you know, the results aren't permanent is what I'm trying to say. They go back to normal. So within about four or six weeks, it had gone back to the to the same length that always was. So um, so so you know those are two non-surgical uh, things that I looked at, and everything else beyond that, they, you know, there's penis pumps, but they're not. They studies have shown they don't provoke permanent gains. Um, there are penile sleeves, which are like you know you it's it's just a kind of open-ended tube that you put your dick in, and it gives you like you know girth and but you know, you can't feel anything. So, you know, I, I mean, <laughs> you know, that, I mean, I was sent one of those by a sex toy company. I tried it out and I was like, I can't feel anything. I had sex with my girlfriend. She's like, I can't really feel, it doesn't feel right. It feels weird. It feels like, you know, um, 
so um so so but what it did do is it felt cool in my hand you know to be like oh this thing i can't even wrap my fingers around it that's dope so it gave me the idea that maybe like extra girth would be something that would be uh you know interesting um so so there was that and then there is there's this, this type of implant called a penuma which is a sort of um it's kind of like imagine a tube with one uh like imagine a five inch long tube um with a sort of slit running vertically in it and it kind of like got is inserted under the skin where the penis meets the body and it's kind of slid along the the length of the penis and it completely encases the penis apart from a bit at the bottom um so the urethra you know where you pee and jizz from is not obstructed you know mm -hmm. and um so um that's a thing and that's permanent right and it costs like 15 grand but um a lot of people say that's surgical right it goes under the skin absolutely that's that's a surgical procedure um but a lot of people <laughs> What's that? It makes me kind of squirm in my seat to hear that. No, absolutely. And it's, and uh, what, the price or the procedure or both? <laughs> well, mostly the procedure, but I did, then I forgot you mentioned the price, which is ridiculous. Yeah. What yeah. Did you say? 10K, 15K? 15, 15 or so. Um, but, but a lot, there are a lot of reports that, you know, um, um, this thing can, it's like in the same way that you can tell fake boobs, you know, like you, it's very easily detectable. Right. So anyone who's going to grab it is going to be like, oh, this feels like hard and not kind of right. um, natural. What about, what, you know, when you when you don't have an erection, then what? Like or. Yeah, like, obviously, it, <laughs> there's I'm sure it accounts for that. But that seems strange in my mind. No, it's true. You, you sort of always look like you've got a sort of semi erection all the time. Gotcha. You know, okay. or, 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 you know, like you look like you're in a state of semi arousal and then, you know, but th like I said, this thing does have a slit in it and a kind of a hinge. So it does grow to accommodate the engorgement, but okay. still, but you're right. You know, it doesn't quite, it's never going to be quite like flaccid ever again, which might be awkward at a doctor's office or in a <laughs> locker room or something, you know? Um, so, um, so yeah, so, so there's that. And then there are these other surgical procedures usually to do with, there's one to do with lengthening where they cut the suspensory ligament, right? Which A, leaves you with a rather nasty scar um, on your pubic bone. And then it also means that your penis will never really um, um, point up probably in the same way that it did. It will either point out, at, you know, parallel to the ground or it will point slightly down, right? I've heard a lot of guys in porn get that so they can get different positions and angles. Uh, possibly that, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's very, it, but they, they, you, you get left with this deep V shaped scar. So it's fairly easy to detect oh, really? okay. in porn if somebody has had it. So look yeah. out for that V shaped, shaped scar. Um, <laughs> and then the, um, I guess the other type of uh, enlargement is the, these girth enlargements. And, Sometimes that's fat that's taken from elsewhere in your body, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. they use a product called Alloderm, which is a sort of um, a kind of skin graft that's taken from cadavers. So you can have dead people's skin wrapped around the inside of your penis, right? Um, yeah. Um, or another thing that you can do, which is probably not very advisable, is for, to have liquid silicone um, injected um, into the penis and now all of those things have major downsides right um and in 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 and, and some are very dangerous right so in in um i'm not sure if there's any cases of people dying from having silicone injected into their penis but there are many cases of women having died after having silicone uh injected into their butts right now um um obviously um they they're probably probably having it done in a sort of not really cool setting, you know, definitely not by like a um, um, uh, MD, right? So, so there are a lot of these kind of back alley things that are going on and, you know, um, so that's a problem. So, so anyway, um, all this to say, none of these, none of these um, interventions seem particularly appealing or effective. Um, it and certainly sounds like you were aware of everything out there. Possibly. Yeah, because I've written about it for years, so right. I know I know a lot about it. And um, um, you know, 
and, and in all the times that I've written about it, the two things that you say, or I end up saying is like, you know, if you want a bigger dick, trim your pubes and, um, and lose some weight, you know? Right. <laughs> which, which are just two good rules to live by generally, right? <laughs> um, so- Can't so, go wrong with that advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, so then, then I, I was writing another story about um, facial fillers, about guys that were having fillers put in their face, right? So um, I actually tried some and had my jawline um, kind of made more square, right? And um, there are a range of different filler materials. Now, these are just um, materials that are kind of like injected either with a syringe or with a micro cannula under the skin. And, um, and they give... Um, they replace lost volume because we all lose volume um, as we age, right? The, the bones in our face kind of like lose volume, um, lose structure. And then the skin and the flesh kind of like hang in a different way. Sorry, Robbie. I know you're a young guy. You've got all this to look forward to. But, um, <laughs> but so, so um, it was. I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm 38. It's, it's <laughs> happening. <laughs> but, but it was really, it's, it's amazing because, you know, you, you go in, this person does this and you can see it actually happen. In, in real time, and then the practitioner finishes, and then you've got a square jaw or a straight nose, or the lines between, you know, the corners of your nose and the corners of your mouth are less pronounced. You know, those are the uh, naso, uh, labio nasal folds, yeah. Um, so there's a ton of stuff that can be done, um, and, it, and it's very quick to do. It's not permanent, it's um, semi-permanent. It's like something you would always have to sort of do maintenance on, right? But of, of all of these products, the one that was used on me that I found the most fascinating was one uh, called, uh, well, it's a hyaluronic acid. Um, and it's something, it's a sugar that our, na our body naturally produces. And um, the interesting thing about this particular filler is that it's reversible. Um, there's an enzyme that can be injected that will dissolve it in, you know, two days, two to three days. So, um, so, What's fascinating about that is, you know, should anything go wrong or you just not like it, it can be, it can be dissipated. It could be melted away, right? Um, it's an injectable. So it's not um, what is regarded as surgically invasive, right? So there's the, the, the um, you know, the um, prospect of infection is lower. You know, there's right. no, so, so, so um, anything you're not sewing, you're just. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And then, so then I read an article um, in a magazine about this guy that was injecting filler into the penis, right? His, he, he'd been putting it into, he's very experienced in putting it into people's faces. Um, this is Dr. David Schaefer. And very, yeah, very experienced and put it into people's faces. And then one day a client said to him, Hey, what would happen if you put that in my penis? And he's like, well, if you're willing to be the Guinea pig, we can find out, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and they did. And, um, and he was very pleased with the results. Now the biggest difference, I suppose, between putting it in your face and putting it in your dick is you need a lot more filler, right. To put right. in your penis, right. Because, you, you know, you're not trying to make these kind of small subtle changes to the structure under the skin. You're actually trying to add bulk. Right. right. So, um, you know, um, like you would need to put it all over the place, basically like every, you know, couple millimeters. That's, that'd be my guess anyways. Yeah. Well, you got to make sure that it's evenly distributed along the whole length of the shaft. Right. So, um, so there's a lot more, um, that goes into it. And usually when, when somebody was just having, like when I had my filler put in my face, they probably used less than one syringe. And in my, um, in my first treatment with Dr. Schaefer that he put in 10 syringes and that was just a beginning, you know, then I came back uh, two weeks later and had another 10 syringes put in. Right. So you trying so, to picture the size of a syringe. It's like a normal needle, syringe it's actually much smaller it's it's one cubic centimeter which is a fraction of a tablespoon right okay. um so so uh, one syringe is one cubic centimeter and it uh i think it it's like one and a half teaspoons or something like that it's, it's actually a, a really surprisingly small amount of liquid but what's interesting is that it kind of expands to three times its size 
um, up to three times the size over the next two weeks. So even though you see an immediate change, about two weeks later is when you're sort of at maximum size. And from that point, it start like your body starts metabolizing it, right? So from that point on, imperceptibly, every day your dick is getting a little bit smaller, right? So this, this particular product, which is called Voluma XC, lasts for about two years. Um, that means if you had this procedure, within two years, it would all be gone. So what most people do is come back every year to replace what's already been metabolized and, and kind of like have a top up and maintain their new girth, right? So, so it's this is, and the same procedure for, for your face as well, right? There's no difference a- you're coming back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you, um, with any type of, uh, any type of, um, th- these main filler, this group of fillers, um, you, you need to kind of maintain it. Right. Um, okay. now that, so that's, he did, he did 10, um, basically he did 10 syringes, right? So that's the equivalent of what, like 15 teaspoons. I'm just trying to picture how much. Let, let me do, I'm just going to do them like cubic centimeters. I'm going to do it as we speak. This is riveting. Yeah. Um, sent me is, um, in, uh, tables, but okay. So there, there is, oh, okay. So, uh, one cubic centimeter. Oh, sorry. 14 cubic centimeters is equivalent to one U S tablespoon, right? Four, 14.7 cubic centimeters. So in my first session, I had around 0.75 of one tablespoon of filler put in, right? Okay. Which, which is not a lot, right? That's, that's um, you know, that's not very much. No. Um, so, and then it expands. And then it expands to, to up to three times its size. That's right. Three so and then it uh, starts, and then, you're, and then it slowly starts going away. Exactly. But I, I came back two weeks later, had another 10. Um, yeah. And then I came back a week or two after that and had another six, right? So, so for, for you know, th- this whole kind of experience was, uh, you know, that what I talk about in my story um, on um, my big new dick.com, um, that that was 26 syringes or 26 cubic centimeters of product in my penis. Yeah. Now um, that was enough to make, my girth go from 4.5 inches around to six inches around, right? Um, and, uh, you can see all the photos on, on your site, right? Because you sent me the photos, so I've seen them. But for, yeah. guys, for guys watching or listening, um, yeah, it looks like a, uh, basically like a Red Bull can, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's approaching that size. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. It's like uh, a Red Bull can is, I think is 6.5 centimeters and that uh, 6.5 inches around. And that's where ultimately I want to get. So I've actually had some more since then. And, mm-hmm. and now I'm more in the sort of Red Bull can area, right? So, um, and, and what's interesting is there are these amazing penis size calculators um, online and you can kind of see, you know, what percentile you are in terms of length or girth or volume. So, um, you know, being six inches around puts you in the 99th percentile. Um, so that means like, you, you know, in a, in a room of a thousand randomly selected guys, you'd only, you'd be like, it would be statistically likely that only one or two would have a thicker dick than you. Right. And I feel that women care more about girth than they do length. Would you agree? I, I would agree. It's actually been borne out in some studies. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, um, that, that is true. And also anecdotally from the people that I've spoken with, um, th- that's definitely the dimension that they care about more. Um, but what's really interesting is women's preferences for penis size. They actually prefer a slightly larger penis, both thicker and longer, but especially thicker if it's a one-time partner. And if it's a regular partner, they prefer a slightly smaller um, penis in both length and girth. Um, and, um, you know, the people that wrote a, a, a study on that, I think it was uh, Dr. Nicole Prouse. Um, she kind of 
theorize that, um, you know, a one night stand, the, the main goal is pleasure, right? Where in a, in a relationship, it's partnership. And um, if you're getting, you know, pummeled every night by a penis that's kind of quite large, it's, you're, you're, it's it, you know, um, you could actually cause damage um, to the interior structure of the vagina, right? Which um, prob- people don't tend to want. Um, so, so that was really interesting that, that women prefer a larger penis in a one-time partner versus a long-time partner. Yeah, bad news if your girlfriend cheats on you, right? She's probably... Uh, <laughs> <bad news laughs> <if you go. laughs> yeah, if she's got the intel, first of all, she knows what's up. Yeah, absolutely. Or was it painful? So it, it wasn't painful at all. So um, as soon as I sat down in the chair, um, you know, they applied or Dr. Schaefer applied a topical um, anesthetic. And then after that had been on for a, a couple of minutes, he injected uh, some lidocaine. I mean, you know, did it? Is it fun? No, not necessarily. It's a needle going into the base of your penis, but it's a it's a very small needle, and it just you know it's just a it it feels like a you know like a little pinch as they say. Um, mm-hmm. So then um, he injects it. I think it, he injected it six points around the base of the penis um, to mm-hmm. numb it, and then. Um, once, you know, he checked to make sure I couldn't feel anything. And then he, he uses something called a pilot or introducer needle. Um, so it's just one needle that goes at the bottom. So there's only ever one kind of puncture in, in the penis. And, and then hmm. after that- I was that, thinking you have to inject it like basically all the way up on all the sides and all around, so. No, I, I think that's how people started doing it before, but that's what's kind of unique about um, the, the way that Dr. Schaefer does it, um, what he calls the swag method or the Schaefer width and girth method is he uses a micro cannula. And um, I think when initially, when other people had tried putting fillers into the penis, they did use um, just a normal needle. And then it's hard to make, um, it's hard to make sure that it doesn't kind of like bunch up, you know, cause you're right. just going, going in in certain points and kind of like, doing doing that but a, a micro cannula is actually blunt on one end and it has holes that run along the side of it if you if you get me it's a kind of flexible a small more flexible kind of tube um uh, you know it's about the width of a kind of like a thin guitar string um and he feeds it through this pilot or introduce a needle and kind of um deposits the material that way so there's less trauma because there's only one um, location in which the, the the penis is punctured and it's right at the base, right? So, mm-hmm. so um, you know, he started doing it. I actually, if you go to um, mybignudick.com, you actually see pictures of the procedure while it's being done. Um, wow, okay. Yeah, so um, um, my, my friend who was actually taking pictures of it, he was like, oh, it actually looks pretty hectic. Like, he, he, you know, there was a lot of motion, this, this, cannula going um kind of between my skin and like the innards of my penis like the the bits that kind of like fill up with blood right the corpus cavernovum and the corpus spongiosum um so these are the chambers that fill with blood and produce an erection right so mm-hmm. he's put, he's putting the the filler in between the skin and then all the sort of like you know the guts of it um gotcha. so yeah Delightful, appetizing. Um, <laughs> was that? Was that? Uh, did it make you queasy to watch, or no? Big I didn't watch it. I made a point of not looking down. You okay. know, so I was just having a conversation with him about the whole time. You know, and we, we were just just having like a nice chat. You know, and and um, I didn't really feel um, any pain, um, but I did feel like some tugging, like some. You know, there was some. I could detect that something was going on. But right. I, it, didn't, it didn't feel like a sharp pain or anything, you know. Um, and, um, and then how about, how long was the procedure? Yeah, you know, if you if you take out the bit where we were just waiting for the anesthesia, the, the local anesthesia to work, I, I would say it was all done in about eight minutes. Eight, eight oh, wow, really minutes. fast. Okay. Really fast. Like, he, you know, he was doing it. We were having a chat and he's like, okay, and here are the last two syringes going in. And I was like, wow, that really took no time. <laughs> at all so as soon as he's done putting it in he um removes the sort of pilot or introduce a needle and then kind of like 
just kind of like stretches it out and kind of like smooths it out to make sure that the deposited filler is kind of like evenly um, distributed around the shaft, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and then he kind of like wraps it up in kind of an ACE bandage, kind of like an elasticated bandage. Um, and he, he said that, you know, for the next um, few nights that I should sleep with it on, making sure not to tie it too tight because you don't want to restrict blood flow, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it's still in this, in that early stage that the, the filler hasn't integrated with the tissue yet. So if you kind of like kind of slept on your dick or something or folded it up, you know, it would, <laughs> it had, you know, it had this memory foam quality to it where it would have like an indent in it, you know? Um, so, um, and, and he said like almost always people come back for two sessions um, because um, you know, that he's like, it's normal for there to be some slight asymmetry after the first one. And then with a second lot, you know, he can correct that and then add more size. Um, he says, usually after people have, um, had a little bit, they almost certainly want more because you can see what's possible. Like after the first go, you know, you're like, oh, wow, this is, uh, this is something else. Like, so, so I got home, obviously there's no recovery to speak of. He said like, don't have sex for a few days. I think don't mm -hmm. have for a week is what, is what he said. But he said in terms of masturbating, he's like, well, you kind of need to kind of like continue to like, kind of like he, he's it, yeah. milk yeah like to massage it and make sure that it's evenly distributed you know so mm -hmm. so you know that was i was happy to do that the next the next day when i took the bandage off immediately after getting home or a few hours after getting home i was actually disappointed i was like oh it didn't make as big a difference as i imagined but it was kind of compressed in this bandage right and it was also mm -hmm. the material was kind of like expanding um, so by the end of the night or certainly the next morning when I looked at it, it was massive. And I was just like, holy shit. Like I, I couldn't believe it, how much bigger it was. Um, wow. so, uh, so yeah, so, um, there was some bruising. I did have some bruises on it. And again, there's pictures of that on uh, my big new dick .com. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, and it, it was kind of like tender for the first, um, you know, for, for, for the first week, I suppose. Um, but when I went back a second time, um, the difference was, and so that I had a f 10 CC, 10 cubic centimeters the first time, and then a further 10 the second time. The second time, um, it was um, sort of the filler made made it less possible for the lidocaine to to kind of like work as well. So it wasn't painful, but I felt it a little bit more, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and um and uh, but obviously he was it was awesome because he uh, there, there was a, a slight asymmetry probably something nobody else would notice but i would and he was able to correct that immediately and uh, and the other thing he likes to split these into separate sessions is because you don't want too much too soon right like the skin has to sort of stretch to accommodate the the extra volume so um you, you know, he's like, we should do it like 10 cc's at a time and then, you know, give the time to recover for the, uh, for the, any bruising or swelling to go away. And then we can do some more and we can assess from there, you know? So, um, but in, there was no downtime. Like after one of my sessions, I went straight to the gym. I went from the place to the gym. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so, so yeah, that was, that was pretty much it. So what if someone is, more of a grower than a shower. Right. Right. Cause that's what I'm thinking. I'm I, when I'm small, it's really small. Like I'm a, I'm a big time grower. I think more than most people from what yeah. I've gathered. Yeah. So yeah. I'm trying to picture how this would be if, you know, you know, if, if when it's limp, there's like not a lot there at all. Yeah. So, I mean, it, that's, it's a big difference when it's, when your penis is flaccid because um, that, um, that extra material doesn't contract in the same way that your dick does, you know, right. like, you know, if you took a dip in a, in the ocean, right. Uh, you know, somewhere cold, um, the, the, your dick will still shrink, but the filler won't to the same degree, you know? So, so gotcha. you, you, you'll never, you'll always have a kind of a shower, certainly compared to how it was before. Right. Right. Um, so you have that bulge effect, which I'm sure some people. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You will have that bulge effect, which, um, which people tend to like. Um, 
Um, in fact, there was an interesting survey that was done about how women prefer a bulge pick to a dick pick because it leaves a little something to the imagination and then right. um, they can project That's a graphic. <laughs> yeah. And they can project their own thoughts on what's going on as opposed to be like, here's my dick, Blah, you know? Um, <laughs> so, uh, so that's interesting. Um, but of course, you know, you could get that effect just by sticking a sock in your underwear, but you actually want to make good on the promise of it. Right. So, <laughs> For sure. um, stuff in the bra, stuff in the. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, so, um, so, so it certainly, it, it, it makes a big difference. I think that's the first picture on my, on my website, on, on, on the article, uh, on my big new dick.com. It's um, you, you see it flaccid at, you know, a baseline after um, 10 cc's, then after a total of 26 cc's. And it's really, it's really uh, night and day. Um, like by the end of, by the end of, uh, by the time you got 26 cc's in me, my flaccid girth was five, and three quarter inches around, right? Wow. Okay. Um, so, 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 so my dick so huge, yeah. was, was a lot thicker than an average erect penis. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's totally. Yeah. So, so that was pretty cool. Um, so, um, yeah. And then obviously the next thing was trying it out, you know, with a real live person. And what was really um, interesting is I was seeing, um, I, you know, I, I, I have like various, uh, you know, I, I have some like, partners that I own that live elsewhere and I only see a few times a year. And I kind of told them about it. Um, mm -hmm. They also happened to be size Queens. So it was, uh, they were very excited about it for me and excited to try it out. But um, at the time I was dating a woman, I did not tell her that I was having the procedure done. Mm -hmm. And cause I wanted to get her reaction for the first right. time when I was. <laughs> that must've been a fun experience to see her was... not drop. <laughs> <laughs> really interesting it was really interesting so you know what i what i wanted to do was to kind of like have her experience intercourse first of all without seeing it uh or mm -hmm. handling it first, you know mm -hmm. so um but um so it's funny i kind of put it in her and she, and she was kind of like looked at me funny like there was something she could tell something was different you mm -hmm. know but it was it wasn't till she actually held it in her hand and came face to face and i never forget it she was just like she looked really kind of puzzled for a minute and she was just like holding it, not looking at me, just looking at it. And she just looked <laughs> up at me and she's like, you've got a different dick now. <laughs> she's like, what's going on? Your dick's different. And I was like, I, I don't know what you, I played dumb for like 10 seconds. That was as <laughs> much as I could do. And mm -hmm. then so we stopped and I, I kind of like told her the, the whole story behind it kind of as I'm telling you now. And, um, and then, you know, and, and she got into it, but she wasn't um, the sort of, she, but she kind of said, I kind of liked how, how it was before. She's like, I, I think it's great now, but I liked it how it was before, which was a very nice diplomatic thing. But what I really wanted to hear was, oh, you've got a giant dick now and I love it, right? And that was more the reaction right, I got. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and that was more the reaction I got from some of these other partners who, by the, but who had always said that they liked larger, especially thicker penises, right? So it was it was mm -hmm. really fun to share it with this one particular partner who, who, um, you, you know, that's just that's her preference, right? So, so um, yeah, that was great. So a few yeah. you told, and and the one you surprised. And yeah, exactly. A few, a few that I told, a few I told, and then, and then the one I surprised. Yeah, exactly. And then I'd had new partners that just didn't know me from before, right? right. So, so that was interesting because they didn't know the difference, right? They, they were just mm -hmm. like, "Oh, you got a thick old dick," and I was just like, "Yeah." And <laughs> you know, um, so did you see a, a a difference between you know how a, a girl would kind of look at you in the past versus now after seeing it? Um, yeah, I mean, I, to be honest, I, 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 it's only been with a few kind of like first time partners, but, um, but yeah, that they, it, it, it was in, it was more, it wasn't more how they felt about it. It was more how I felt about it. Like I loved seeing how much bigger it looked in their hand and in their mouth and in their vagina. Right. Mm -hmm. Than 
um, it, you know, like it kind of gave me uh, confidence in, in a way, like, you know, cause, cause seeing this, seeing like, you know, they couldn't touch their fingers around it. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's a new experience for me. Right. So, so, um, you know, it was like a can of Red Bull. Right. So like, and yeah, the, like <laughs> you think about that, <laughs> you know, the, there, there's like the, the jokes about that. The dick is like a, like a Coke can. Right. Like, right. Right. <laughs> right. So, so it was, it was, it was, you know, it was interesting. It kind of, um, you know, um, you know, it is a weird confidence thing, but I was like, oh, like I I know, I statistically know that this is one of the larger penises this person has ever encountered, right? Mm -hmm. uh, why should that matter? It absolutely shouldn't. And like how how good you are at sex shouldn't really have anything to do with how big your dick is or any of that stuff. However, having said all that, <laughs> it, it was, it, um, I, I certainly liked it i i liked the way that sex looked like visually like i just said but i also liked how it felt right hmm. so like you didn't lose any sensation no it's more really more, huh. yeah because like i feel like um now every part of me is touching every part of her mm -hmm. right like when we're having intercourse for example like it feels super tight all the time right mm -hmm. it's like you know, well, one of my one of my girlfriends like, oh, this kind of means we can't do anal anymore because it's kind of too big for that now. And I and I was like, oh yeah, but I don't. I used to love it, right? But I don't care anymore because that that tightness is is evident when you have vaginal sex now, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's um, you know, and it's and it's kind of a lot like, you know, that you lube is definitely a bigger part of my life than it was before, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> right. and, and like the prospect of like being chafed if you have like a marathon session that goes on for a while you know mm -hmm. that that's more likely um, right. but also um, I, I used to and um, you know in, in, the, in the article one of my partners actually we talk about how it's changed the way I behave in bed sexually where she's like oh before you used to like change positions a lot like you'd be doing like hard stuff and then soft stuff and then you know you'd be like um it was almost like you needed to kind of keep yourself occupied to keep all these different stimuli happening but she's mm -hmm. like now you're much more present and you're much more kind of like enjoying the sensation of mm. just normal sex right which it which That's she great to hear. yeah Good. she observed and, and i absolutely um agreed with yeah that's how it felt for me too Hmm, okay. So yeah. you felt, obviously there's a, you said there was more confidence. You yeah. Just, uh, visually feeling, it sounds like overall, um, you know, totally, totally for the better, like uh, in all categories, it seems like. Um, well, not all. I, no. will say, I, will, I will say one thing, um, mm -hmm. like, it, this is cool because I figured this out now, but like getting condoms to fit was like mm. a nightmare, right? And um, so I, you know, I spoke to Dr. Schaefer about it and he was like, well, um, you know, um, you really want to watch how much you put in because you're going to be too big for standard condoms after a certain point, you know? And I even tried with like the Magnums and the XL versions like Durex XL and stuff, the stuff that you can get at the store. And mm -hmm. then it was still way too tight. And then I actually have, I talk about this in the piece and there's pictures of me like stuffed into these things. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it was just, I, you know, I had sex with several people with these l supposedly large condoms, but they weren't quite big enough and it, and they felt way too tight and it made sex feel like not fun. So mm. Dr. Schaefer actually recommended this one company called my one, uh, my one.com. And they, um, they, they have like, I think 90 different sizes and you um, kind of like do some, um, there's a calculator on their website. You put your dimensions in and then it spits out a, a particular type of condom that's going to be best for your size. And um, I've tried them now and it's like night and day. They're actually fun to use. So, um, so that's really good. So I'm very, I'm very happy about that. But for, for the first 
couple months, I was just like, oh, sex in regular condoms just doesn't feel very good anymore. Um, so but yeah. we found that a solution. That would be a problem if you so, were yeah. partners, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's that. And also, like, I'm not going to lie to you, like, you, it is... It, like in jeans, if you have like, if you, I kind of usually wear tight pants and jeans, like it's way more, it's just like a bit more obvious, you know? Okay. I, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, because, more looks, I'm, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, and it's no, it's no longer kind of false appetite. It's not like a sock in your pants would be false advertising, right? But it's, right. it's the real deal. It's, um, <laughs> but, so that's kind of cool, but like, you know, um, sometimes you just like, oh, I hope it's not, to <laughs> to porno uh, right. <laughs> you, you know when, when you're doing something that is definitely not porno related like you know it's standing in line at the post office or something you know sure yeah so i want to ask you a bit about the reason why um from the first place like i i think how much do, do you consider um that the reason why you wanted to do it was because you had kind of tried other things in the past and this is like some like an exploration sort of thing for you or you know was it really more about the confidence um yeah. curious about well, that yeah well i mean I, you know i was uniquely placed in a way because I, yeah. I, I you know i had done my homework i did know about all these other methods out there you know um i i'd had a, like a range of professional experiences that led me to this and mm -hmm. i I kind of had done my homework really. Um, so, um, and then I was also um, very lucky um, to, uh, you know, get in touch with Dr. Schaefer who was open to the idea of um, giving me this treatment um, in exchange for um, coverage, right? Gotcha. So, so I was gonna write about it um, and, uh, and I have, um, so, um, you know, um, it, it's, it's interesting, you know, like when you're a journalist, you can get a lot of, um, free stuff, you know, yeah. um, because people want to, in fact, it's a lot of people's jobs to give journalists three or, or influencers right now. Um, so, so, you know, you, you get given things mm -hmm. and then you, you write about them and then hopefully they see an uptick in business. Right. So, right. That was the kind of arrangement that we went into um, because if we hadn't, I couldn't have afforded what this would have cost me. Yeah. Right? I was going to ask you, what, what would it run? Well, it's different for, for everyone. I'll, I'll I start. guess it depends on, of course, it depends on how much uh, material, right? Yeah. So, and that's governed, that's governed mm -hmm. by how much bigger you want to get, how much thicker you want to get. And then how much, and then how long your penis is in the first place, right? If you've got a skinny 10 inch dick, right? Right. You, you've got to use a lot, a lot of filler, right? <laughs> right. So if, you, if, you're, if you're short, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna be quite so expensive. Um, and also the, the degree to which it expands is individual as well. I'm just saying all this first, right? So right. then I'll tell you that what it would have cost if I was just paying like a normal person was like twenty two thousand uh, dollars or thereabouts. So twenty yeah. grand because each each of the syringes is valued is, is costs about a thousand dollars and they get slightly cheaper as you get more of them. But mm -hmm. uh, I did the calculations and figured out that what it would have cost me was twenty two and a half grand. Yeah. So wow. um, so that that's a lot. Um, and um, meaning. You know, it's not for everyone. However, cheaper um, than a sports car, which I'm sure some yeah. guys might use. It, well, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's cheaper. Yeah. It's about the same price as a monthly payment on a regular car. You know, um, like uh, you know, the average <laughs> car repayment is like five hundred bucks a month or something mm -hmm. like that, right? Well, if you spread the cost of this over two years, which you can with like Care Credit, for example, which is like a a uh, credit card company that kind of um, helps you kind of like spread uh, cosmetic procedures like over time. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, like, so that's how I was thinking about it. I was just like, well, if so, so what I'm trying to say to you, Robbie is like, I, I did my homework and this was offered to me in exchange for my writing. 
right? So mm -hmm. it was made very easy for me. Like the obstacles were taken away. Um, right. And, um, but then of course, now that I've had it, that means I have to have it always. Otherwise my dick will go back to how it was before, right? So right. already- and I'm guessing that's not an option. It's not an option. No, one, once you go big, you can never go back. Um, it's, uh, well, right. you, can, you could, I suppose, if you pr preferred it, but um, yeah, but yeah, I don't want to, you know? So, so what that means right. is that I have to get a top up like maybe every year, right? So mm -hmm. that means like, uh, you know, quite a bit of expense to me um, every year, but you can kind of spread that cost you know, to, you know, over, over the course of it would be like several hundred dollars a, um, a month. Um, and, you know, for me, I mean, other people spend money on, on stuff, right. I don't have a car cause I live in a city mm -hmm. or, or I'm a kind of a digital nomad too. So I kind of, um, you know, I, I don't own a home. Uh, I rent, I mostly live in Airbnbs. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I feel like, um, I, I, there's a, even though it seems like a big expenditure, it's not, um, I save money in so many other ways that I'm still way right. ahead of the game, even if I'm like, you know, paying to have a big dick every year, you know? So, yeah, uh, I mean, so, you're using it, so why not? You're getting, exactly. getting about the money's worth. <laughs> yeah, and no. you know, and, and I'd, I'd, I suppose, um, you know, some people have like expensive hobbies, whether you play, you know, if you play golf and you like to play really nice courses and you like to have nice clubs or, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah, it's way more expensive. Yeah, all that kind of stuff adds up, and I just, I, I just rather have a big dick and and not play golf, <laughs> and, and not have a sports car, and 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 not have a home in the suburbs. It's just, it's a, it kind of fits with my lifestyle more, you know. I bet if you ask a lot of women, they would, they would probably agree as well. Would you rather have a big dick or you know, golf yeah, maybe. country club membership? I think a lot would take the bigger dick. That would be a very interesting study, or at least a survey. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so, um, so I don't know. Um, but um, but it's definitely been life changing. Um, you know, and, and I, I really like every time I look down, I'm like, wow, look at that thing. You know. Um, yeah, you still get the surprise back. How long has it been now? Um, so the first set of uh, things I had in like. Um, between mid August and mid September, those first three sessions. Mm -hmm. And then I went back about two weeks ago, not because it had kind of like gone away just because I wanted a little more, you know, um, I think, I think there's probably a, a bit of a danger in that is it, and, and Dr. Schaefer told me about that. He's like, you know, people get this and then they forget what they were like before. And then they just want more, right. and more you know? Um, so he's like, it's good to keep, measurement so because the mind plays tricks and you just think it's it's kind of like yeah, you, shrinking you forget what normal was or you for you, you forget what your expectations change i guess exactly is there a is there a point where you have to stop or can you just keep getting bigger and bigger um i think yeah i think there is a point where you have to stop you know because it or i mean we mm -hmm. i mean it would be become functionally useless i mean you couldn't fit it in right you know like um so, I mean, but, but maybe, maybe people, there is going to be some guys that don't care. Like, they're like, oh, I have a giant dick that can not be accommodated by anyone who is a human being, you know? Um, it's, it's like that meme of, uh, you've seen that meme, the, the black guy who's got, who's got the dick that's like down to his knee. No. <laughs> well, you haven't seen that guy? Uh <laughs> <laughs> just just google like a uh, big big black guy with <laughs> huge dick or black guy with a massive dick it's like he's, he's got like a hat it's, it's a pretty common meme okay <laughs> but that thing looks completely un unusable like i don't right, yeah. <laughs> right. Can, like I mean, wrap it around his leg so yeah so you wouldn't want to be uh, you know i wouldn't you know I, I, i'm in like close consultation with the with a couple of partners that i do regularly see you know right. so so you know um so my one friend was just like, you know, I could probably handle like a tiny bit bigger than you've made it, but not too much. You know, like right. I, th I think we said Red Bull can was the cutoff. Um, right. So and and that's and that's for her, you know, but again, I'm not doing it really for anybody else. Not not one particular person. I'm doing it for me in the same way that, um, 
that anybody has any kind of cosmetic procedure done is if you do it for you, for how you want to, you know? Yeah. Your own confidence and your own. Yeah. I, I mean, exactly. the, girl, the, the girl that I was dating over the summer, she was like, I loved your dick. I can't believe you did this. This is crazy. Like, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, um, and then she's like, well, what would you do if like, I said, I hated it. And I was like, well, it, it, you know, it's, it's really not about you. I have to say, you know, and, um, yeah. So um, maybe it would be if I was in a monogamous relationship with one person, I'd certainly have to um, weigh what they want in, into account, but I'm not, right? So, so it's not right. a kind of a thing for me. But, but, you know, as I told you before, this stuff can actually be melted away. So if, mm-hmm. if, if you, you know... You always go back. It's, you you can always go back, or you can always go bigger. Right. You know? it's, it's, so, I and mean, you're I, the first person to do this procedure, right? Uh, the first person ever, no. Okay, but the in no. terms of using this flu, no. Okay, no. So he had, he had done it on other people. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. No, he. I think he's done it around over four, five hundred times. He's done the procedure. Um, okay, got it. Mm-hmm. He started doing it, I think, in two thousand seventeen, mm-hmm. and his particular way of doing it is it, it bears his name. It's the Schaefer Width and Girth or Swag procedure. Mm-hmm. I like that. The sword. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> um, so um, he's he's probably, um, if not the most, then among the most experienced in in um, in this partic- in, in kind of like injecting dermal fillers into penises, right? And um, beyond that, he's also very experienced in fillers and in all other kinds of injectables, just generally. You know, um, mm-hmm. the the dick stuff for him is a new thing. Usually he, you know, he does breast augmentation. He does liposuction. Um, so he's a double board certified plastic surgeon. Uh, mm-hmm. So, so, um, you, you know, he, he's, but, but, but you're right in that the procedure is relatively new. And, um, you know, I, I just also want to point out, like, as I've told you before, I've done my homework. Like I know about all these different procedures, um, but this was new to me. And I was shocked that I hadn't really heard about it or, or realized how effective it was, right? Mm-hmm. And I kind of feel like this is where like, you know, the degree of public awareness is like similar to what the degree of public awareness about breast augmentation was in like the 1950s. You know, like, I, I feel like a lot of people just don't know that this is an option. Right. Yeah, I had no idea until I yeah. talked to you about it. So, um, so that's that's really the main thrust of my article. Um, right. Is is like? Would you, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to ask you after uh, who you would recommend it for. Well, uh, you know, I would start by saying there are there are a few people that it's actually that probably wouldn't be very good candidates for it. Um, and and um, I think Dr. Schaefer. Th- these are all outlined in in the piece, um, at mybignewdick.com. But um, th- these include people with micro penises, right? So those are penises that are kind of only like, uh, you know, I, I forgot, I think it's two and a half st- standard deviations below the mean, which equates to about, you know, like just a couple of inches when erect, you know, so mm. but adding girth to a penis that, that's um, short like that probably isn't going to kind of create the desired effect, you know? Um, right. Also, um, you know, he, he discourages people that can't really afford it of course, to, to, right. to not do it. Um, um, I think heavy smokers are people that tend to have um, higher complications just because smoking does all kinds of things to blood flow throughout the body. And, um, you know, that it's not something that you want to be doing. Um, and then I think people, um, he also said, um, you know, people that have kind of like a small head of their penis or glands in relation to the rest of their penis would probably not have like the ideal results too, because, um, but, but you know, too pointy, I'm guessing, right? Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's more like that the skin, the thicker skin of the shaft of the penis will almost kind of like cover the head. Mm-hmm. Like when you right. use, you know what I'm saying? Like it's right. It's, um, um, so, so though, those are the, so who would I recommend it to is, you know, well, you know, some studies suggest that as many as 55% of men wish they had a bigger penis, right? That's not to say they hate their penis or they, they, um, you know, 
I, I kind of kept up at night thinking, oh, my fucking dick's too small. It's like, hey, oh yeah, if I could be a little bit bigger, yeah, I absolutely would. You know, which is a different thing. You know, it's it's not, a, it, it, so, so, you know, like I say in my piece, like you don't have to be, sh- you don't have to be a short woman to enjoy wearing high heels, right? It, it, it just like a little extra, like a, it's, a, it's like a, an enhancement, it's a boost. Um, well, it sounds like it's, it's even a lot extra. I mean, from the yeah. way you described it, you know, it, it's, it's obviously really material. Like I'm, I've never tried a penis pump before, but what, you know, it, it's, what's the difference between if, if, or something that's non-surgical, non-invasive, non-injecting, you know, what's the percentage difference? Like what, you know, it, I think you kind of, I'm not asking it the right way, but you know what I mean? Like how big can you get versus how big did you get from the, and you said you lost the sensation anyway, so maybe it's a useless question to answer, but it seems yeah. like it's... Well, 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 those two things, you, so the penis sleeve is just, a, you know, it, it's almost like a novelty, I suppose. I, I mean, maybe some people, like, enjoy them, couples enjoy them, but I, you know, it, it kind of, you know, I just couldn't feel anything and nor could she, right? And with penis pumps, you can, um, you can kind of have maximum engorgement, which will make your dick as big as it ever can naturally be, Right. Um, right. but, and then you ha- would have to use a cock ring to sort of keep it that way, to keep the blood in it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but also with a penis pump, you do run the risk, you know, a lot of people damage themselves. Um, oh, really? okay. yeah, I mean, you can over pump, right? right. And then there are, there are, there's a lot of, um, anecdotal evidence about like, you know, that people are using it, then one of their balls gets sucked into the tube, which is incredibly painful. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, and then, and, and also it's, I mean, you know, I, I don't think I've got the talking of balls. I don't think I have the cojones to sort of be like, Hey babe. Um, oh, you know, let me just pump up my dick. And then you, just <laughs> drink. But, you know, like, I think that's fine. Right. If, you're there's, like, there's if, <laughs> if you're part of a couple and you're older, but it's certainly, that's not like a, uh, that's not a sort of, first night sleeping together thing that you want to pull out, you know? Definitely not. Uh, Very good point. Because, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, if you, if you do it with your girlfriend, fine. But obviously not with the new partner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, so so anyway, so, so there's that. Um, yeah, does that answer your question? Um, th- yeah, th- so, so it sounds like someone who, you know, someone who's obviously, you know, they, they'd like to see some growth in that area. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it sounds like you can get a significant change, See, like breast augmentation, you know, so it, yeah. it sounds pretty similar. Like you can get significantly bigger if you want it to be. Yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah. Look, so from, from 4.5 inches to six inches around, that's an increase, a girth increase of 33%, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, that's the difference between a six foot man and a nine foot man. Like if you yeah. think that way. Like, <laughs> that's a good way to, to, to put it. Yeah. So, so, um, so that's, um, that's interesting. Um, so, and also, uh, you know, I'm a kind of a single dude who's kind of usually n- non-monogamous, right? So I think I think you, you would definitely, if you had a long-term partner, you would definitely want to um, get his or her buy-in about it, you know? Right. Um, um, and, and, and have that be a factor in your decision-making. Um, and then, um, yeah, so, so I mean, that's who I would recommend it to. Anybody who could kind of like think, oh yeah, I'd, I'd, uh, that would be fun. Um, but of course you, you kind of have to have the means to do it. Like I said before, um, yeah. this, is, this is not something that, I mean, now that I've experienced it, I, w- I would definitely invest in it and, and have this be part of my life. But having not experienced it firsthand, um, I probably wouldn't have. But there was no, until I wrote my article, um, yeah my big new dick.com i um i didn't have anyone to talk to about this right i didn't have any uh, dr shaver doesn't have a lot of dick pictures on his thing he's got a couple but they're not erect like there's right. erect pictures all over my uh um over my uh story online because if if i'd have had that information and and, and it's a 21,000 word long article which is really really long Right. So it's, it's about the third, the length of like a, a paperback book. Right. It, it's, it's very long. It's very detailed. And I try and I try and um, talk about 
everything that I can think of related to this topic, right? So, mm-hmm. so what I'm hoping is that people that are thinking about it can read this and and kind of like, um, you know, come to a conclusion on whether this is something they would want to try. And full disclosure, like, uh, you know, the way that um, if people click through our website to to Dr. Schaefer's uh, consultation page. And, th- and they end up having the procedure, then there's a financial transaction that happens between m- myself and Dr. Schaefer, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so we- we're getting paid per new um, patients that kind of like, you know, find him through us, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for uh, disclosing that. Yeah. So, and he's in New York, correct? That's right. He's he's in Manhattan, but, um, um, you know, up until COVID, um, people would fly in from all over the world um to see him and um and uh and and still now people from from neighboring states are coming to see you know people come from like massachusetts and connecticut new jersey pennsylvania yeah this seems like a really good option um i guess the only yeah i think a lot of people would probably do it it's seen it but obviously the cost it's not the cheapest thing ever i think if, if, if it was significantly cheaper i could imagine a huge percentage of people doing this kind of like as many people that as many women that do, uh, you know, boob jobs, they guys would consider this, I would guess. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, no, you're absolutely right. It is, it's incredibly, um, you know, it's, it's, it's pricey. It's pricey. Um, and, um, and it's also not permanent. So it's, it's a, it's a kind of like a commitment uh, until you don't care about having a much thicker dick anymore, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's something that needs to be constantly uh, maintained. Although it does get cheaper, I suppose, um, if you to maintain the same size because you're just basically topping up at a certain point, you know. But um, you know, like I said before, um, it, it's it's not too different from what most people pay per month, you know, for a, uh, a car payment, you know, or or something like that. It just depends on what on what you find important and what is important for your life, you know? Um, but having said all that, um, Dr. Schaefer is currently, um, he's, he's doing a study um, with the makers of the, of the um, filler that he uses. And, um, and, you know, this study is supposed to look at like the effectiveness of dermal fillers in increasing penile girth, because there hasn't been a lot of studies on it. So he's actually looking for, volunteers to participate in this study and um you would actually get you'd get this for free um if you were eligible for the study um wow. how yeah. many people is he looking for i think he's looking for 20 initially so it's like yeah so 20 people and i think the idea that the the study is going to be like they i think they get 10 syringes and then wait a, f- a few weeks and then get a second set of, t- of 10 syringes. So it would be um, a total of 20 cubic centimeters of, of filler, um, you know, which, which is, can make a, like a really significant difference. Um, you know. And then the maintenance, you know, a year or two down the road, that would be. Yeah, that, uh, no, that. I, exactly. I, I think okay. at that point, you know, and, and uh, uh, yeah, exactly. So, so they'd have, they'd have like, plenty of time to kind of figure out whether it's worth it to continue on um, and, or not, you know, some people might, might be like, Oh, you know, it was fun, but I didn't, I didn't really, I couldn't justify the price or some people would be like, I love it. Um, I can't imagine going, going back, you know? So, right. uh, but yeah, I think after that initial um, treatment, their participation in the study um, that, yeah, they would be responsible for every top up from that point on. But um, and what um, how do people apply for this if they're interested? Um, there's actually um, the study coordinator. Maybe I could uh, we could put his email in the um, in the description if that's okay. Sure. And then people, yeah, well, it'll be right there in the show notes. So okay. You can email right. him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and he will. You know, I think um, he'll get in touch with you, and then you'll have like an intake conversation, and he'll determine whether you're eligible um, for the study you know, um, based on a few questions, I suppose. Perfect. So that's all there is to it, you know? So it's, uh, it's pretty good. Um, it's a pretty good deal. <laughs> um, and, um, uh, yeah, you, you may get to have the, um, the, 
the penis of your dreams for free, at least for uh, for a year or so. <laughs> the penis of your dreams for a year. And yeah. maybe longer if you want to pay. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that this has been uh incredibly educational. Um and I'm sure for you know, for guys out there who have who have ever had questions around it, you know, your article is going to be the the best source they could possibly find. So yeah, anyone listening, go go check out my my big new dick.com, right? That's right. Um the, the link will be right below. People can click there. Yeah. And uh, there were some explicit images, but uh so use caution. <laughs> Not safe for work. Exactly. <laughs> well it depends where you work, but yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> remote workers, no big deal. Work from yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Paul, thanks so much for coming on and, and being so open and authentic about your story. Uh you know, I think it'll be, like I said, really valuable for, for those people who are interested. Absolutely, Robbie. I mean, the article, the whole reason it exists really is, is to is to let people know that this is an option if it if they think it's appropriate for them. So this is this is great that I get to talk about it with you. Perfect. All right, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Cheers. Thanks for listening. If you want more, go to innerconfidence.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast for the latest episodes.